So uh, joining us is uh, Craig Fairbrass, star of the new film Rise of the Foot Soldier Origins. Uh, thank you ever so much for your time, uh, Craig. We're really grateful. Thank you. Well, it's very nice to be on here. As I so, said to you, uh, there's quite a few of these podcasts now, and you seem to be one of the one of the better ones. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll, we'll take that compliment. Um, the first thing we we're going to uh, ask you is, Craig, is that I understand that you were uh, uh, quite reticent about uh, appearing in what is now the fifth film in the uh, Foot Soldier uh, franchise. Um, what was it that kind of, or how do, how were you persuaded to get back into it, to take on the role again? Um, oh, it's, <clears throat> to be honest with you, to be brutally honest, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd been lucky enough, of, I feel like a broken record with this, I, be, I was lucky enough to be hired by Carnaby and Signature 10 years after the original. They called me in and said, listen, we want to do another foot soldier, we want to centre about you, about yeah. Pat Tate, you know, his story. You came off of the original film, you popped off of that film and you were the one that everybody went, ah, you know. Um, so I said, yeah. And I said, you know, we did number three, it worked out really well, did fantastic figures. Um, I won a little award for the acting. Then they went to me, well, we're going to do another one, yeah. which was obviously my bail, which turned out really good. And it was nice. And I thought, you know what, I've done two leads in these two movies now. Um, you know, Pat's a little bit of a one dimensional guy. Basically, it's me beating up people. Um, but I was still gracious enough and grateful enough to have done those two films. And at that point, yeah. I was, you know, from I came back from Spain and I said, now I'll, that's it now. You know, they've really served a purpose. I've had such a great time making them. You know, me and Andy are very good friends, the producer, Andy Loveday. Um, and I went off and I did Villain um, and I did Muscle. Um, and then I went into, I did a play for three months, an Olivier nominated play called Warheads. And started getting offered sort of different material and was reading different scripts. Um, I never never thought about it again. And then they came round and said, you know, we're gonna do this next one, number five. And I was like, you know what, you don't need me. That franchise is strong enough and big enough that I think it supersedes any actor. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of done. I mean, we was out, we was playing golf, me and Andy out in Spain. And he said, you know, you know, I really want you to be in it. And I was like, you know, I, I don't I, I sort of don't want to. And it, anyway, they went away and they re wrote the script. Yeah. And then about six months later, you know, we, we chatted again. He said, Craig, you know, I really want you in the film. It won't, won't be the same without the three of you. And I went, right. oh, you bastard, you've done me again. <laughs> <laughs> he said, the chemistry, I mean, he's a lovely guy, Andy, and he he, he did sell it to me. And I, out the camaraderie between me, Terry, and, and Roland, um, we've had a lot of fun over the years, a really yeah. lot of fun. And in the end, I said, you know, you know what? Um, they looked after me as well on the um, pictures of the Queen. <laughs> so um, I went, yeah, well, I went back and did it. I think I did, I did four and a half days. It wasn't, it wasn't a big role. It was, it's, it's a back seat role in, in number five. But it's quite um, a significant role, though, and it's certainly a. Memory. I'm not seeing the film, so I can't really comment. To be honest with you. Yeah, you uh, uh, you certainly make your mark uh, in it, uh, Craig. Um, the, as you say, you, the the character is, you know, you're you're suggesting that it's one dimensional, um, but and he it is a violent character. He has a lot of fights, um, and a lot of fight scenes. Um, I'm just wondering, um, for people who aren't aware of it, how you go through choreographing those fight scenes um i'm thinking you know in the first instance there's a, a, a scene in a pool hall uh, or a, uh, at a pool table where someone is near beaten to, to, to within an inch of their life yeah i know see we sort of well i not me the the the, the, the character the writers we sort of made a rod for my own back if that makes sense i mean yeah. because it was always right how do we beat how do we top the pizza cutting scene <laughs> that, that, that was the big discussion every time. It's like, right, everyone come up with something. I don't know. How about if he just smashes his keys in the face or half have a fire extinguisher? <laughs> you know, number three. And then it was the stuff in the bar in, in you know, and I, I, listen, I went along with it because, I, you know, we was having a lot of fun and it, it was good to be working. And, and there's a, as I said, there's a massive audience for those films and the fans love that shit. <laughs> so, you know, they just do. 
the, these scenes with um, you know quite extreme violence in them, there mm. does seem to be uh, a pl uh, ample opportunity for them to go wrong and to someone get injured. Um, I spoke to Stephen Dorff some while ago, and he was talking about a scene they did, and he actually sustained an injury not from the uh, from, from the most ridiculous of things, uh, rather than what you you think you would get injured with. I wondered if that had happened with yourself. Yeah, I mean, I've been injured loads of times. I mean, it happens. You know, um, no one sets out to injure somebody and safety precautions are always in place, but sometimes little things do happen. Um, but, you know, and it's difficult because on low budget, in the, not so much because they're not low budget in the, in the world of the, of, of the indie film world, but on indie films, because we are strategically, you know, have to be on time, they have to be shot quick. There, 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 isn't, there isn't the luxury of the big, who has their phone on when it does an interview? I mean, that is page <laughs> fucking one. Turn your phone off. <laughs> and you don't have the luxury of the big films of going in and choreographing for weeks and working it out bit by bit. You know, a lot of the time you turn up and you may have done it once or twice and then it's blah, blah, blah. You I know, and, and then you just do, you, you do what you, you can. Fucking hell, I can't believe that. <laughs> These phones. Who invented Apple phones? That's off now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, they can be difficult, really difficult. Um, and, but I mean, Dan Stiles is an amazing stunt coordinator. He's been on all of them and we've always tried to make the, I've always tried to make the fights that I do within these films real. I don't like the chop suey gear. I'm not, I don't like all that, do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. we tried to make Pat a very big, brutal, horrible brawler. Yeah, who, yeah. Who, who, who's, who's he's just a wicked fella, do you know what I mean? He's got no morals and scruples. His moral compass is completely fucked, you know. Um, so you're yeah. you're a you're a big guy. You're you know you you're in great shape. But I'm just wondering, uh, in the same scenario, could you handle yourself in the same situation? Listen, I mean. Nobody likes doing that. Nobody likes aggravation. Nobody likes trouble. But unfortunately, every now and again in life, it crosses your path. And you, you either protect yourself or you, you, know, you do what you've got to do. But ultimately, that's not a thing anybody wants to do. Um, you know. Have you found yourself in that kind of scenario then? I mean, gr listen, growing up, I'm not, I didn't live in a, in a fucking box in the, in the loft. Do you know what I mean? I've, yeah. I grew up in South East London, my family, I was born in East London, you know, I had loads of mates, I went out, I went to a school with 1800 boys, you know, in Woolwich, yeah. you're going to get into a little bit of a tear up every now and again. Yeah, growing yeah. up, but as you become a man, you, you know, you realise that that's no way to behave, um, unless you're attacked. So this character, Pat Tate, he's um, psychotically violent, he's misogynist. Um, it's two things really is one kind of what having played the role it can't be easy to go back to playing someone like that and equally when you are playing it it must be a relief to think thank goodness that day's at shooting and i'm away from that horrible nasty person i'm playing yeah i i one thousand percent i mean i didn't enjoy doing that scene with a pool ball i've got to be honest with you it's not you know it was a little bit um you know i'm not a great lover to be honest with you of you know, I think about young people growing up and it's, you know, I'm an actor, but, it, you know, I'm an actor, it's pretend. I'm in a film, it's it's fantasy, it's an illusion, it's not real. And you have to keep hitting that home to people that it's it's not real, because you could never do that. You know, I know it's not the nicest form of entertainment, but for some strange reason, these films have become synonymous with heavy duty violence. But isn't the fact that Pat Tate was a real person, he was, by all accounts, a, a genuinely nasty person? Oh, he was a raving lunatic. I yeah. mean, when he died, he had 12 different, I think, 12 different types of drugs when I read the book of his autopsy. Yeah, he was a guy. I mean, we've built on that um, with each film. He was a fella who would turn on a six-month, go berserk. I mean, that thing happened in the Happy Year. You know, he was a very, very... Yeah, he was just, he was a stick of dynamite. Do you know what I mean? He, I think the drugs, he's very quick tempered, very yeah. on it. You know what I mean? He gave no one the time of day. Yeah. 
So um, in light now that you've played the, the role uh, numerous times, we're on to the fifth film. Um, it's it. I really enjoyed the film. I, I'm really kind of surprised that I enjoyed it. Um, to be perfectly honest, have you seen the other? Have you seen all of them? Uh, I've seen the first two. I didn't see. I haven't seen your one, the Marbella one. Um, well, there's two more after that. I mean, but you know, I, I know Nick's done a great job. I'm just saying, a lot of what I'm the reason I'm saying this is because a lot of people have watched the film, so they really liked it. Shocked by the fact that they actually like to rise of the foot soldier film, but yeah. people have been saying that since number one. Yeah, yeah. Because they are, you know, I'm, 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 I'm spewing the repeated words again, but you got to remember, you know, Andy Loveday, Carnaby, Mike Loveday, you know, the whole, the gear they make is quality. Yeah. The work goes into the scripts, the lighting, cameraman, the fucking stunts, the this, the that, whatever has to be done to make that a very watchable film, they do. So I'm just trying to say, you know, there's four other movies I'm yeah. glad you liked the last one, but I just feel sorry for people who've not seen all of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, in light though that you had to be, uh, you were a bit reticent about coming into this one, you were persuaded into doing this one. I think this one's going to be a hit. So, taking the you know the b bottom line is box office, and a sixth one is likely. What's the likelihood of you wanting to do or getting involved in a sixth one? I, I'm too old, you know. I'm I'm too, I'm too old now to be playing Pat Tate. I mean, I'm not being funny. You know, it's ridiculous. I'm, I'm, you know, people are commenting now that we're all too old. Um, you know, they were of an age. Um, and I think we've done unbelievably well to milk it this far, you know, yeah. for me playing that role. And that was a little bit, that was another little thing that was playing on my mind of the fact that, you know, I just felt that I was, you know, wasn't too old. I've started playing these older characters like in Villain, Eddie Franks. I'm playing a character who is not, has got a little tinge of that, but he is their age. Do you know, yeah. do you know, what, I'm, do you know what I'm trying to say? It's, yeah. I'm, you know. But, um, so going to, uh, looking at outside of uh, your, the, the, the Foot Soldier fr franchise, you've worked with some massive stars, Denzel Washington, uh, Sylvester Stallone, um, and, and Cliffhanger's a, a brilliant, a brilliant action film. But you mm. went to Hollywood to do that. I'm just wondering, why did you come away from Hollywood? Was it just what Hollywood is? It's that... hard. Because it's fucking hard. You know, don't get me wrong. I did the Call of Duty games. I did the guest stars on American TV. I did some other films. But I got to a point in my life where, A, I lost my mum and dad very close together. I had a place out there. My children were growing up. I was a very, very selfish bloke when I was young. You know, it was all about me. It was yeah. all about me chasing the dream. And I'd done a thousand trips to LA. I'd done that. You know, I went out there with one dream and one dream in mind. I wanted to be on the front of a film, standing with a gun, as a because I was obsessed with Stallone. I was obsessed with Schwarzenegger. I was obsessed, obsessed with those films growing up. And I ended up doing it. You know, I ended up getting yeah. myself and doing those, those movies, not the big giant, great big ones. I was lucky enough to be in Cliffhanger, but for me personally, ticking that little box, I sort of got on the plane coming home knowing I'd never go back and go, you know what, you didn't do too bad. You didn't do too bad. There's a lot of people go out there, can't even get fucking arrested. Do you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's tough. Yeah, not yeah, I, tough. I hear that a lot. So uh, this is a question that we ask all of our, all the actors we interview, all the directors as well. And it's like our signature question, if you like, but um, in retrospect, what's the role that you turned down that you regret turning down? Um, oh God, it's been a couple. Um, but I don't want to voice them to be honest with you. No? No. Uh, can you can you give us a clue, maybe? No, um, <laughs> no, I'm going to keep that private because I've I've, I've, ne I've never I've never mentioned them. There's loads of roles I wanted to do. Uh, I want to play Bill Sykes one day in a in a, in a modern. I want to give it the Pat Tate treatment. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's <Bullseye. laughs> <That> stick. <laughs> We've just had a modern a dating a dating <laughs> back last year. Um, yeah. So we're um. I'm just going to suggest, was it an action role that you've... Uh, 
It's sort of, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to get it out of me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm never, I'm never, I never talk about the past. It's on the shoulder. Move on. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you very much for your time, Craig. Uh, it's very much appreciated. Um, it's it it's really good. This this fifth film. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm glad you did. As I said to you, Nick's a very smart guy. I think he's got a great future. Um, they pumped a lot of money into this one. I mean, a lot of money. And um, you know, Andy and Nick wrote the script together. You know, Andy's a clued up bloke. He, you know, he knows them stories. He knows those characters. He knows that world backwards. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it doesn't surprise me that, and we all came together. We had Vinny in it, you know, that helped. The whole package helped. Yeah. And um, to make it the, the best of the bunch. So, you know, it's congratulations to everyone involved on the film. I was just going to say just quickly um, with that, with yourself and Vinny and what the, the film is about, there's and Keith Allen as well. He has his reputation. Yeah, Keith Allen. Yeah. There, there seems to be um, a lot of testosterone sloshing around on that set. I would imagine. Well, a lot of estrogen now because we're all getting older. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> 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 no, I'm joking. Yeah, I mean it. It, it was good because um, you know, at the end of the day, you 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 know, as an actor, you're employed to go away, learn your lines, and turn up and be as professional as you possibly can and make that role as believable as you possibly can, yeah. you know, so that the fans look at it or people watch it and go, my God, you know, a guy either scared me or he, he had something about him. And that's our job. Um, and it was lovely because everybody turned up, everybody takes it very seriously. We're there with it for a reason and everybody cares. Um, and every time we do it, it works. Yeah. It's the strangest thing. <laughs> this foot soldier franchise never ceases to amaze me. <laughs> it's great though. Got the fans love it. I tell you, we've got such loyal fans. I, I, I'm going to say this. I thank every one of them personally and individually for being with us since day one because they're they're like a, they're like another breed. They really are. There you go. You heard it here first. Thank you very much <laughs> for your time, Craig. It's it's really thank good. you, mate. Very much Cheers. appreciated. Thank Have a you. lovely weekend.